Ryan P. Wilson from Authority Effects here. We're going to take a look at how this shot was composited. Now you'll notice as he comes around the tree, he actually shadows the ground, and we didn't just simply multiply it by a shadow pass. We painted out the lights. That's the only way you can do it without having an HDR image, and we'll show you how we did that. So here's our scene in Houdini, and the way we matched the scene lighting was to take the background plate and project it onto the geometry through a camera. And that camera is parented to the light, which is matched to the shadow angles of the scene. Now since the camera is moving, and you can't see the entire scene through any one frame, we took about three or four renders, stitched them together, saved out one texture projection map for the camera. I think it was a 4096 texture. We plugged that into the light projection slot on the camera and hit render. Now for the ground shadowing, what we did is we took the plate, projected it onto the geometry through the scene camera, and we rendered it in UV space on three or four frames. Now once we fuse together the various renders of the light projection, we take that into 3D coat and import it as a diffuse pass onto the geometry. We create a new layer and using the clone tool, we paint out all of the lighting. So I'll show you quickly how we do that and then I'll show you the final result. Now here in Fusion, we plug in the light painted texture into the uh, material slot. We render that out using the scene camera and we use the shadow pass that we rendered from Houdini to reveal the non-lit version. And here's what that looks like. Now I'll show you node by node how that's done. So we take the ground geometry with the texture projections, pipe that through a render node, and that gives us a new version of the shot without any direct sunlighting. We take the shadow pass that we rendered out of Houdini, merge that onto a black background, and we take the plate, do some processing on it to find out where the lit spots are. We take the shadow mat and multiply that. Then uh, I'm not going to go through every node, but uh, after we take the render of our unlit version, we apply film grain, we put it back to 2.2, we do some JPEG damage, change the depth, and put it back in linear, and that's so we can match the red footage. Then what we do is we do a merge from the original plate, and we merge on this unlit render using a mask, and the mask is the shadow pass. And here's the result. Then we multiply in the ambient occlusion passes, and we merge on the creature. Now we'll take a look at how we composited that. We take the alpha channel, and then we start layering on every single render pass on top of that. Here's the diffuse, indirect diffuse, environment lighting, the ground indirect lighting, single subsurface scattering, the multiple subsurface scattering, merge those on. Then we have our object reflections. This reflects everything in the scene, so this reflects the projected textures onto the geometry, as well as any other objects, including himself. We merge that on. And now what we do with all the reflections is we take the facing ratio and we multiply it so that uh, the facing ratio is greater than one. And then we take our reflection pass, convert it to HSV space, and we add to the hue the facing ratio. Then we convert that back to red, green, blue, and you'll see we get an oily looking texture. Now we went and looked at many live snakes and we looked at them in various lighting conditions. We held flashlights up to their skin. We looked at them in the dark and uh, they exhibit this iridescence. So we wanted to make sure we had that in our renders. So I'll show you what that looks like on all the different reflections. So here's object reflections, environment reflections, and the specular. And then when we merge all those together, it's subtle, but it's there. Now here's where we do our color correction. Let me pass this through and I'll merge it onto the footage. So we take all of our roto and we simply multiply that out. So now, he is situated behind the trees. Now for the color correction. So what we do is we take a black and white version of the render and we set that uh, to hard light. And that sort of gives a, a filmic look. We use that on a, lot, on a lot of our renders. It really helps situate, uh, it just gives better contrast and it takes some of the highlights and desaturates them. It gives a, a film response. Now I'll, I'll go ahead and unpass through some of these color correctors. You see one by one we start matching them to the scene. Good color correction starts in the shadows. So what we usually do is we start with the shadows and work our way up. I'll turn up the gain on the LUT so you can see. Uh, try to match the shadows properly. So the grain and the JPEG damage, this is the exact same node network I applied before. And you'll see another two here just like it. That's for the 
glow and the light wrap. I'll show you how we do that. So we drop in an AFX glow, plug in the footage, turn down the threshold, and we simply plug that in here. Now we also plug the glow into this bitmap mask. We use that to generate a luma key from the glow, and we use that as a, uh, a mask for the film grain so that we only apply film grain to the glow. Then all we need to do is tweak our glow so we're happy with the results. Now here's the difference without and with glow. You see it really just helps match it to a camera lens. Now for the light wrap, same thing, take an AFX glow. Now this time we're going to plug in the actual plate. So we take the plate, plug it into the glow, and we take an inverted alpha mat and plug that into the lens pre-mask, the glow pre-mask. And what that does is it's going to glow the background everywhere where the creature does not exist. Then we multiply the output of this glow by the alpha channel of the creature, and now you have light wrap. And all you do is merge that back on the creature. So I'll pass that through. No light wrap, light wrap. Very subtle. I'll turn it up so you can see it. There you go. You can see that light wrap spilling over. You can adjust the threshold and the size. And like I said in my other tutorial regarding the glow, uh, usually one is the perfect number for this because it happens to just work with realistic luminous values. And you can see that nice, subtle light wrap, very realistic. And all we did was drop on a glow and we used pretty much default settings. All I did was lower the outer size and a threshold, that's it. Then what we do is we take our shot, put it in 2.2, and we take a look at it uh, in various color spaces. So for this one, I've just cranked up the saturation a little bit, just helps me see. And then we take a look in HSV space, and we look at each channel, red, green, blue, or HSV, and just make sure that he fits in each respective channel. And if he fits in all three of these views, and the RGB, then you can bet it's a pretty good composite. Finally, what we do is we redistort the plate, transform it, crop it, and then we just send it out to our two render nodes. Uh, here's our movie for online editing, and here's the preview quality. That's it. Thank you very much.